Yeah, bang bang Rahel. Um, Jimmy Tibbs, not Tibbet, Jimmy Tibbs uh, Senior. Um, I was in, uh, I come to Chelsea Prison, uh, being after being in the blocks and everything, I've just come out of the SEG unit, uh, come out of the SEG unit with a mate of mine called Togi Ladlow, and he's taking me to Sea Wing. Uh, so I'm walking in the Sea Wing, uh, as I walk through the gate, um, mate, they're all looking over the landing. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but uh, big Jimmy Tibbs. This man is big. You know what I mean? He's just like, you look at him and you think, oh, who's, that, who, who's this geezer? You know what I mean? He's just like, he's like a boss. You know, like you get these people, you look at you, he's a boss, man. This geezer's a powerful, powerful, powerful boss, man. You know what I mean? He just looked over, he had a white bib on. Um, obviously, so he's working in the kitchen and he's got all blood over it, so therefore I think he's a butcher or something like that, yeah? But he's a big guy, you know, and sort of like I walk up the stairs um, and he's at, the, he's at the end, but I get to know he's with Ronnie Bender, he's with young Jimmy Tibbs, he's with, uh, there's a few other pe people there. Uh, anyway, forget the, forget their names at the minute, and uh, I'm walking across the land, go to the land myself, go in my cell, and, you know, it's just, the, cell, the cells are just nothing in them, just, you know, the spare necessities, and you've got to do it all up the way you want to do it up later on for, the, for your bird, yeah? But um, Jimmy Tibbs, the old man, he's, he walked by, looked look through. Big man, mate, big. And his arms, he had massive, massive arms and big, big hands, you know, like really powerful, big man, this geezer. And I was only tiny at that st stage, about nine and a half, ten stone, because of what I've gone through, maybe less than that, yeah? And I come out of my cell, um, I walked to the toilet, got myself some water and stuff and cleaned up bits and pieces and clean my cell out as much as I could. And then it, it was like bang up, banged up, and you know, I'm in my cell. I've got to look myself a little radio that they, my Toga lad was giving me. It's all I've got is in there as a radio, but laying down there playing it, door opens up, come out of your cell, and there he is, big Jimmy Tibbs, you know, and walking uh, down the lane. I think Jimmy Tibbs, I'm not quite sure if he, if, if he was on the landing, on our landing, or if, if he was upstairs, but he's a big guy, man. He's, uh, you know, and I was so impressed by by the way he's, and I think at that time, uh, young Robert was there, and young John was there. Uh, John and Robert was both on B-Wing, and they wasn't, they wasn't doing a long, long they wasn't long-term as like young Jimmy and the old man, uh, Jimmy, yeah? Uh, Jimmy Tibbs, uh, young Jimmy Tibbs, very, very impressive Jimmy Tibbs, mate. I mean, respected his dad, and you, you could see them, like, see that there was, like, twins them two, you know what I mean? There's not twins, but you could see that that was dad, and then, and young Jimmy uh, was his boy. Very, like, good fighter. You heard about it, young Jimmy being a fighter, boxer. Got to give him, you know, got to give him utmost respect, you know? And he used to walk around very proud, and the old man used to walk around very proud, but I just couldn't get over the size of the old man. Uh, everything goes on and on and on. So I get a job in the kitchen. Um, I'm first job in the kitchen always is on the washing up. I don't like it because you get all that stuff in your arms and the soap. But I, from the from the washing up, I moved into the potatoes, uh, peeling the potatoes. I'll get all the black bits out of them and chopping them up and all that. And I was next door to the butcher shop, and uh, the old man Jim was in the butcher shop. I don't know if uh, the, old work, the old man worked for Smithfield Meat Market. I'm not quite sure he did. Um, but, mate, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't be boned by him, mate, because I see he could cut up a lamb and a bit of beef. It's, you see him on that knife, mate. He didn't muck about what, what, what. And he didn't muck, chow, 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 chow. he didn't muck about, he didn't muck about of him, you know what I mean? And being that we all like to, uh, to eat properly. You know, you go and see him, any chance to get a bit of meat, mate, you know? And they look at me and they go, uh, you know, well, you know, I don't really give a lot of people meat, mate. He said, but yeah, I'll give you a little bit. He said, how are you gonna get it out? I said, down my trousers. He said, yeah, be very careful. Uh, he said, because there was a well screw on there, uh, X block screw, he's, 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 and he's really on it, you know what I mean? He's on it, he's, 
all over you. So be careful. So I thought, fuck this. <laughs> I don't want it. I said, no, leave it. But when it, but when it was all, when, when the kitchen was like going down to the hot plate and all that, and the old man didn't really do the hot plate. Uh, he was very up in the kitchen as such. Him and Ronnie Malloy, they never done it, but now again they did, do you? So uh, you had Ronnie Malloy in the pantry, was, and Jimmy Tibbs in the uh, butcher's side. That was two best jobs ever in the kitchen. You got Ronnie Malloy who wouldn't do nothing. He wouldn't get, he'd get involved with a silver, silver bullion. He wouldn't give you a tanner, it's Ronnie Malloy. He was like, let Jim and him were working together and they used to take out so much stuff. Anyway, I watched him. So he's told me, Jimmy, don't take nothing out because you've got the world school on and he was a searcher. So I said, Jimmy, get a parcel of beef steaks or whatever it was, put them down his, his thing. Uh, Bib Bond walks out to the screw with the, the world screw, it was an X block screw. World screw goes, jum, jum. never even searched him, you know what I mean? Because he's the butcher. Uh, he runs the kitchen in a way, uh, he, you know, without him, without him there ain't no kitchen because he's chopping up all the meat for the pies and all this, that and the other and, and the big bit, bits of lamb and the beef and the pork chops and the pork cutlets and all these sort of things. So he's really uh, in charge of the kitchen. So they let him get away with really what he wants to get away with as long as he don't take too many liberties yet. So I see this screw going on, <laughs> and I thought, yes. Yeah, I, I thought, yes, I, I, I'll do it tomorrow, yeah. So I walked in there, I said to Jim, I said, can I have that bit of, he said, no, it's gone. He said, can I, he said, no, at the minute, let me just think about it, and I said, I'll give you a bit later on, or whatever, or whatever. And he came into the, he came into the uh, potato room, and he said to me, uh, the veg room, and he said, listen, he said, I'm going to take something out for you, yeah? He said, because you won't be able to take it. I'll take something out and I'll give it to you. We got the wing. Oh, really? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to the wing and he gave me a, a bit of beef, you know what I mean? Nice, you know what I mean? And I, the night to get it cooked, uh, then I give it to some people who cook it for me. But they used to cook um, big lumps of lamb. And it used to make me laugh when uh, Ronnie Bender, uh, from the craze, uh, you know, uh, I was always to believe that he was the one to give uh, the benders a knife to do Jack the Act, but it wasn't him, yeah? Uh, I don't know if Ronnie Bender got put, put got the bird he got. He got bird for just being there. It's a conspiracy turnout, isn't it? Just being at the house when the benders, when the craze stabbed, every, stabbed him up. But the craze uh, didn't want to do it prison by themselves, yeah? Uh, so I, I'm a strong believer that they put everybody else in it and um, just to be banged up with everybody else, you know what I mean? And I mean, to get 20 odd years, I think when he been got 25 years, something like that, uh, for nothing, but being there is a bit on the top. And Ronnie Bender, I want to do a podcast about Ronnie Bender, or a little video about him, maybe tomorrow or next day, but he was a nice guy. But Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Tibbs, uh, made me love because he used to come in from, from, from the kitchen. Uh, he never used to, as I said, very rarely did he go on the up plate. If he did go on the up plate, he wasn't on in there very long. Uh, old Mitchell, the PO, would go, go on, Jim, you go, you know what I mean? Because Mitchell used to get his meat cut up for him and everything, you know, his own bits and pieces. And Jimmy would walk in the wing, and out of nowhere would come a leg of lamb, do you know? <laughs> I swear. <laughs> hey, he's such a big man, Jimmy Tibbs. He could put a leg of lamb like he wouldn't even know, you know what I mean? He was massive, yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, give, uh, he gives someone, uh, Mickey Green, Mickey Green. Uh, Mickey Green was one of the richest guys uh, in prison, Mickey Green, big drug, big, big, big drug baron, you know what I mean, Mickey Green. Um, but I'll do a podcast about Mickey, uh, a video later, later on. Uh, but Jimmy, the old man, give him a leg, a big, big leg of lamb. And Bump is in the kitchen watching it and doing this, that, and the other, and takes a tray out and bump oils and bits and pieces and puts it in the oven. And then it's bang up, isn't it? Everyone bangs up for an hour, the tea, the screws come out, and look at it, he's still got the lamb in it. And the screws, and these screws, right, on our wing uh, were fantastic. We're fan What's the old boy's name? There's an old, we had an old SO, Jack Sads. That's Jack Sads. What a nice geezer. Old boy. 
he was he was in the office. Uh, I never got no phone calls. Uh, Jimmy Tibbs got phone calls. Ronnie Bender got phone calls. People that have been in the wing a long time, a bit important, uh, that got phone calls. I was just ex agro from Albany, block, 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 and he got killed. And I'm just a normal uh, person that's becoming uh, going to be later on in your full stuff or a big company. I'm just learning now, yeah? So from there, I'm going to get into my street fighting, my unlicensed fighting, and all that sort of thing, you know what I mean? So I'm, at that time, I'm just an arm robber, uh, just a kid learning, and I'm with all the people that you want to be with, yeah? Because these people that I'm in shelter with, no one. There's no one out there now. It's been with these people, mate. They're just, do you know what I mean? To sit down and talk to these people, go in their cells and talk to these people. You go in their cells and talk to Jimmy Tibbs and his dad, or the dad and Jimmy Tibbs. It's, and they'd be sitting there, the old man. And the old man, now, didn't you just laugh a lot, you know? The old man, a very straight face, uh, but big, powerful man. And you can imagine, uh, when he was a well, I could imagine him being an airful now. Because let me tell you something, right? When I used to see him, uh, young man tips, I was getting back, I was like, um, because I'm in the kitchen, I'm taking yeast and bits and pieces. I'm trying to get back to a, a decent size, got some lift weights, and I'm starting to get in the, in the gym, uh, power, doing some lifting, uh, deadlifts, they take a deadlift, a few inclines, declines, benching, and all the curls, and all that sort of thing, you know. Feature kills. Anyway, so I'm in the gym doing my bits, and the old man, uh, first time he uh, wants to come in with, with his son, young Jimmy, and they're downstairs on the floor. We're on the stage, they're downstairs on the floor. But they've got weights down there, and, they're, and, and they're doing, he comes up, the old man comes up with young Jimmy and says, Can I have a go? I said, Yeah, go on, crack on. Mate, listen to this. This old man. Not the old man, he's a young man. What was he, 40s and 50s, 40s, 50s? Listen to me tell you something. Jimmy Tibbs, yeah? Jimmy Tibbs, young Jimmy Tibbs, dad, which is dad, John Tibbs, dad, yeah? He put a plate each side, which is a sexy key, yeah? He put another plate each side, which is 100 key. Now, 100 key is 220 pounds, maybe a little bit more, yeah? With the collars and bits and pieces. So... It's a lot of weight, 220 pounds. I mean, people don't, you know, you pick it up on the floor, it's a lot, but to have to press it, it's a lot, you know, we just started, you know. People could do two tens, a 10 each side with the bar, and you know, and it's hard work, 40 kilos, you know what I mean? But anyway, there was 100 kilos, it's just pressed out 60 kilos as if it's nothing. Listen to me, you got all the 100 kilos on the bench. Bang, 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 you banged out 10. 10 with 100 kilos, never done it before. He might have done it years ago, but never really done it before uh, for maybe 20, 30 years. But I used to say to him, you know, Jim, how are you so strong? Why are you so powerful? And he had such powerful shoulders. His arms are massive. Do you know, like, um, because his arms are so long, he had massive, must have been massive works in Smithfield Market, the meat market, because his hands and arms and wrists were twice, three times the size of anybody else's. Just massive arms, and you know. And do you know why when people have big arms at the top, muscular, his weren't, it was long, you know. Very long arms, very long biceps, triceps, very long. And it wasn't flabby, it was hard, you know. And yeah, mate, he just knocked him out. And I just said to him, uh, where, you know, why, where do you get all this strength from, Jim? It's Unbelievable amount of power you put in. You know, and like, I think he's about six foot four. He had to be 19, 20 stone, I know. Maybe maybe a little bit less. But I see him, I said, so where did you get the power from? He said, well, you know, I've always been strong. I've always chucked uh, meat about and fish about and boxes of this and boxes of that and, you know, big size of beef. So then I knew that he worked in Smithfield, yeah? Or maybe he didn't work there, I don't know. Maybe he went there to pick things up, but... He, was just, he said, he was chuck, I used to chuck him about like nothing, way, you know, and I thought, yeah, man, I've got all his hands. <laughs> Come on. How nice is that? You know, Jimmy Tibbs, uh, his son, Rob, jump, jump, Jimmy Tibbs, young Jimmy, 
to shake the old man's the old man's hand. He is a legend. The old man is a legend, you know what I mean? And there you are shaking his hands and talking to him, and you're shaking young Jimmy's hands and talking to him. And I remember uh, when Jimmy, uh, when Eubanks was going to fight Gary Stretch, and I was there for the weigh-in, uh, I had photographs, uh, I did put them on. I had, when I was there for the weigh-in, who did I bump into? Jimmy Tibbs. <laughs> he was on the way, and I said, all right, Jim. He turned around, he went, Hello, Ray, how you going? And it's, do you know what I mean? And I was so happy, you know, like I thought myself, to remember me, you know what I mean? And like, he's a legend, you know, he's like a proper legend. Well, I'm a legend a bit, like later on, you know, but he's, he's a, a legend that I want to know, you know what I mean? And and I was talking to him and this, that, and the other, as dad, and yeah, dad, yeah, and all this, yeah, yeah, they're all right. And, you know, and I thought to myself, this guy, young Jimmy, I'm going to do a podcast about young Jimmy um, as well, video, but a young Jimmy was a nice diamond of a guy that could really, really have it, yeah? And you wouldn't want to muck about of him, mate. He would punch you around the gaff, you know? I'm surprised um, that a lot of people said that uh, young young um, uh, Bill to bomb Billy Williams, uh, was the governor from that area. I don't think so, you know. I, I mean, myself, young Jimmy, uh, was a bit near the mark, mate. Young Jimmy was a bit near the mark. Robert Tibbs, Johnny Tibbs, they was a bit near the mark, mate. Um, uh, you know, and they was, as far as I was concerned, they was a, they was a firm to be reckoned with, you know, because I didn't really realise uh, that, 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 I mean, they were such, so powerful. I just thought it was uh, like... Uh, who was it? Was it Craze, the Richardsons, you know, and uh, then he gets uh, the Dixons, Alan Dixons, and, John, uh, and his brother, George. They was very heavy, and so was the Tibbses, you know. And then he had the, the Barrys, Parky and Johnny Barry. And is it Terry Barry, Keith Barry? They was all uh, big, heavy people too. And I've done bird with them, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've done, I've done bird. Keith Barry, I'm going to say, there'll be a video about Keith, but a little one about Keith Barry. I think it's Keith Barry. Uh, when I was in Brixton, he drove me fucking mad, Keith. Sorry about swearing, but he drove me mad. <laughs> Keith, uh, Barry, one of the Barrys, it was either Keith or Terry, he drove me mad. It, was, it wasn't Parky and it wasn't John because I was away with him in Albany, yeah. But um, about the old man, Jim, I is like, you know, I mean, when they when when uh, uh, the belly had the belly and all that, you can imagine you know, the old man there and all that young Jim. Everybody's there. Everybody's watching these birds do belly, belly you know, in their lips or whatever they call them, tutus or whatever it is, yeah. And all dancing about, and the old man's watching. Everyone's watching. And it's it's a memory, do you know what I mean? It's such a big memory uh, to, to talk about. All them people, you know, doing that, and and when uh, and when uh, Sex Pistols come down to the gym, uh, and you know, and they're upsetting people like Jimmy Tibbs, young Jimmy Tibbs, the old man Jimmy Tibbs, they're upsetting Robert Robert Tibbs and Johnny Tibbs are gone, but they're upsetting everybody, you know what I mean? And uh, they was very lucky to get out of there. <laughs> the old, I think the old man he got on and <laughs> cut them all out. <laughs> Jeez, oh, I love him, man. He was such a nice guy, and you know he looked after me in the in the in the in the, uh, in the kitchen. You know Peter Lyons, gorgeous Georgie Jones. You used to see him walk out, but the best one in there uh, to walking out with things was Ronnie Bender. Uh, Ronnie Bender, he done. I think it was in the works or something. He was coming, he had done the beans. I'm not quite sure what he did, yeah. But Ronnie Bender and Jimmy Tibbs, they run that kitchen in a way. Because when Ronnie Bender come in, he'd always walk out with half a lamb <laughs> or a big lump of beef for pork chops or lamb chops or bacon and all that, you know. And then he'd walk in to see uh, Malloy, Ronnie Malloy, the silver bullion geezer. Uh, go and see Ronnie Malloy, Ronnie Malloy, give him loads of tea, sugar, milk, coffee, and just walk out of it, biscuits, cakes. And yeah, I swear to God, mate, that was like, do you know you see 
uh, Godfather and, and all these Al Pacino films and all that. They, they go in prison, they go in the big cells, don't they? And they're cutting up uh, beef and bits of garlic and frying it. Everybody else is on rations. But it's the same thing. Goodfellas, that's it, Goodfellas. It's the same thing. <laughs> this lot in Shelves of Prison was the Goodfellas. Yeah, mate. They were the Goodfellas. And I'm so pleased, mate, that I'm one of the guys that seen that, yeah? And I was with them. And I, I learnt a lot from all these people, you know, the Benders, the Lawrences, the Tibbses, the Frasers, the Greens, the Terry Millman, Lou Swallow, Tony Ludlow, David Potter, all these people that, that was in Chelsea Prison, I learned a lot from them, yeah? Peter Lyons, uh, me, anyway. <laughs> Just a little story about Jimmy Tibbs, yeah? And I loved him to death, mate. He was such a nice, nice geezer. And uh, everybody helped everybody out in terms of prison. There was no greed in there. Um, no greed, mate. Everybody helped everybody. And the greatest thing in terms of prison is Christmas Day, where I know it was not everybody in terms of prison. And I know it, not, it was not everybody on our wing, sea wing, but it was a lot of people uh, that was on the landing, my landing, I wasn't not my landing, but a landing that I was on, the benders and all that, and you go down, it's Christmas day, and they sat down on tables, and they had a Sunday dinner, a Christmas dinner, believe that, and crackers as well, I'm telling you, and drink vodkas and cokes in, in, in jugs and all that, with coke and all that in it, no orange juice, that's living mate, it was like good fellas, <laughs> I swear, it was like good fellas, mate. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Ray All. Please press the like button and subscribe. Come on, subscribe and like, mate. It's uh, a good story. That it, it, and, mate, I'm going to have a little couple of three days when people that I was in charge of prison with and people that I love and respect are gangsters. And that's it. Take care. Nice one.